that bank broke away. So we have the concrete truck, me holding the chutes, and then guys finishing behind. And I think that's what happened is somebody happened to be looking forward and watch the bank break away and we tipped, we didn't, the driver did, tipped the concrete truck over into, into the foundation that we we're trying to pour. I've taken pride in not listening to people tell me what I can and can't do. From 2 a.m. Monday morning to 7 o'clock Tuesday evening, Welcome back everybody. It's Sunday morning here, so we're gonna get into another story while I stack wood. We got this little bit of oak that we got left here. I'll quick get it stacked up um, because it shouldn't take me too long. I'm just gonna tell a story about two worst days that I had in the construction field. And they both happened while I was working on the road. Um, the first one, and I don't know which one I would consider a worst day. Um, neither one of them involved anybody getting hurt, so I never had any real terrible days or that bad of an experience um, in the construction field. We'll start with the first one. We were working in Rolla, North Dakota, which is about an eight hour drive from my home. And our typical and our typical schedule was we would show up to the shop at about 2 a.m. on Sunday night and then take off and get to the job site after we had everything loaded up and uh, kind of ready for the week. So then we would leave town about 3 a.m., 3.30, 4.00 depending on how long that actually took us um, and with what we actually needed to, to get loaded up for the week. So we would, or I should say, this particular Monday morning, I was driving. So we left town about 3. The eight hour drive put us up to Rolla at about 11. And if I can remember the details correctly, we started pouring concrete at about 12. We were pouring a floor for a big shop that had in floor heat. And I think the pour took us about two hours, which was typical. I think it was about an 80 yard pour we used a pump truck to get the concrete on the ground. And everything went pretty good other than right about when we finished the pour, it started to rain. And it was mid to late October and it was kind of cool. About 45 degrees, 40, 45 degrees, maybe 50. But it, with that rain and the cool temps, kind of knew that it was going to take forever for the concrete to cure. And it rained and rained and rained and rained. And with the cold temps, it was doing just like we figured. It was taking forever to cure. We finished concrete all through the night. We take some breaks. Obviously, you're waiting for that concrete to cure before you work with it and the sun started coming up and I think that we pulled all the power trawls off from that floor at 9.30 that morning. So if you're keeping track with math, I had worked, worked from 2 a.m. draw that eight hours till now it's 9.30 Tuesday morning. And granted, when we're waiting for that concrete to cure, we were getting an hour break here and there. And uh, it wasn't completely 
working all the way through. But at 9.30, we were able to pull the tools off from that floor and get packed up so that we could come back home, which meant another eight hour drive. I think we left about 11, put us home at about seven. And so I had worked through completely from 2 a.m. Monday morning to seven o'clock Tuesday evening with basically no sleep, um, just a couple of short naps here and there. And not that that was typical, but it wasn't super uncommon. I'm gonna restack some of this so that I can kind of square up this corner. But that was Kind of, we took pride as a crew in being able to pull stuff like that off. As far as the long hours, getting jobs done that a lot of people didn't think that we could do, especially with such a small crew. And it's just how we were. And that was part of the reason I liked that job, because we would do a lot of things that people didn't think that we were able to do. And my whole life, I've taken pride in not listening to people tell me what I can and can't do and proving people wrong when they do tell me that I can't do something. And I know that there's a lot of people around the country that are the same way and share some of the same traits about proving people wrong when they tell you you can't do something. Um, the second day was another road trip. This one was not quite as far, but we went out to, uh, excuse me, let me back up. So I got home at seven o'clock that Tuesday evening and we needed to have another job done that week. So I got home at seven o'clock Tuesday evening and ate supper and kind of hung out with the family for a little bit and then went to sleep. And then at seven o'clock the next morning, I was back to work and we just worked our normal schedule um, seven to five, the, the remaining part of that week. So that, that super long day, Monday, Tuesday, um, we didn't kind of put a feather in our hat and say that we got that got those hours out of the way you know and, and stopped at 40 but just kind of kept moving and continue to work just like that kind of that long day never happened um so we're working in for this second story we had to go to groton south dakota which was about a six hour drive. And if I remember correctly, that Groton, South Dakota is pretty close to Aberdeen. And that spring, the Aberdeen area had been getting just absolutely hammered with rain. And for anybody who's in the construction field or has family in the construction field, rain um, rain shuts a lot of things down. So, having these jobs on the road and dealing with weather at times can be pretty hectic and uh, less than ideal, to say the least. So we dug this foundation for another big shop for a farmer. And started raining for about a week and the soil's real heavy out there so it held water like a bucket and we were able to get a break in the weather 
and we were able to dig a trench out to get some of that water out to be able to get into that hole to kind of start with the foundation and we needed to to get footings poured to be able to get the foundation up. And the problem with heavy soil and a lot of rain is mud. So all day we're traipsing around in the mud because the soil is clay and your boots would build up into 40 pound snowshoes and then you'd kick the mud off and 10 minutes later you're carrying around 40 pounds on each foot again and it's just it's not fun and it makes for a pretty tiring day carrying around all that extra weight on your feet and i always knew when we were going to have jobs like that that were muddy that by the end of the day i was going to be pretty tired not a big deal just something that you get used to and deal with even though it's not fun but so we're dealing with all that mud and the soil is saturated and we're kind of waiting for concrete because we have the footings ready to go and I think that the pump truck had canceled on us but we needed to get those footings poured so we just decided to pour out of the back of the truck with the chutes off the concrete truck which is fine but it's an added level of danger because you're driving a truck close to the bank and you have to have everybody paying attention because stuff can go south and hurry truck driver's got to be minding his P's and Q's because he's got guys lives in his hand because he's got to drive all while hitting the concrete unloaded out of his truck and like I said the ground was saturated from all the rain in the previous days and we had gotten about two-thirds of the way poured I believe and we were going down the long straight run it was about a hundred feet long and the, the foundation depth was four feet from the top of the bank down to the bottom of the footing. So real close to how I'm right here, this maple stack about that deep down in the hole. And I would run the concrete into the forms off the truck. And the truck driver got pretty close to the bank. And I don't remember exactly how I yelled or somebody else saw it happening but that bank broke away so we have the concrete truck me holding the chutes and then guys finishing behind and I think that's what happened is somebody happened to be looking forward and watched the bank break away and we tipped we didn't but the driver did tipped the concrete truck over into into the foundation that we we're trying to pour luckily Nobody was hurt. The driver wasn't hurt. He was he was on the opposite side of where the bank tipped over, or the bank, the truck tipped over onto the passenger side. He was able to ride it out okay. And because we were on a big farmer's place, we were able to tip that truck back over with a tractor and some chains. And we actually were able to finish pouring concrete out of that truck and nothing happened as far as anybody getting hurt. Obviously we had to clean up everything that had broken and all that extra dirt that's now in the hole and the situation with the truck tipping over kind of shut that area down for a little while but um, nobody got hurt and several people could have been killed. But nobody nobody was hurt at all nobody even got a scratch
So we were able to kind of finish up that afternoon and just like that first story, uh, myself and another guy had to get back home and I don't remember the details as far as this one, if we needed to get back home to finish another job or if I had to get home for personal reasons or whatever, because that doesn't really matter, but we were able to get packed up and we had to make the drive back home and this is where the story gets a little bit funny but it just kind of caps off a, a bad day we were coming through a small town west of home at about 3 a.m and because of the long day and dealing with the mud and it was hot out so everything was covered with mud and sweat and boots are nasty so I had just kind of stripped down into my t-shirt and I was driving the truck home sitting in my underwear no shoes on because my boots were nasty I had those in for a big job truck with toolboxes on the side and then we had this shovel a big shovel rack and I would throw my boots in that shovel rack to kind of air out on the way home and coming through that small town, they were doing a like a DWI check. We're coming through that small town. I got pulled over, and when the officer came up to the window, he saw me just kind of sitting there in my underwear and my t-shirt, and was rather confused. And uh, he asked why he pulled me over. Or if I knew why he pulled me over, and I said, well, honestly, I assume I was probably speeding. Otherwise, I don't see why you'd pull us over coming through town at 3 a.m. And he said, well, you're right. And then normally when somebody comes through town at this time of the night, it's pretty sure DUI stop. Um, but you guys don't really look like you've been drinking. But I do have a question about how you're dressed. And I kind of chuckled and explain the same story to him that I explained to you and uh, he said so you're you're on your way home from work from yesterday and I said yep and he's like man that's crazy and I, I told him I said yeah I wish I wish that it wasn't a, or I wish that it was an uncommon thing but it seems like that is becoming more and more common for us all the time and he kind of chuckled and said thanks for being sober and that we had our seatbelts on and it just kind of slowed down he pulled me over for going 37 and a 30 um which isn't i mean it's speeding but i wasn't flying through there obviously and uh so those are probably the two worst days that i can think of I'm working in construction and thankful to say that those two worst days that nobody got hurt um, I never was on a site where anybody got hurt really bad um, obviously bumps and bruises and cuts and stuff like that were commonplace but no uh, no real bad days and I'm just thankful that I can say that those two pretty long days that are in the grand scheme of things four days at work and very 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 long days at work but nobody got hurt and in both situations um, well, I guess the first situation, nobody really had any chance to get hurt, but uh, the one where he tipped that concrete truck over, the fact that nobody got hurt is just a blessing, and uh, the reason to think we all got somebody looking out for us, but well, I'm done with that oak, 
It's not quite a cord. Well, it might be. I'm over, I'm over eight feet long. And we're probably closer to 55 inches there. So it's, it's about a cord. I was thinking I'd be able to square this up though. Um, but I got more back there to, to go get. Uh, like I said, guys, thanks for being here. I did open a merchandise store. If you want to check down in the link, buy a t-shirt, support the channel. I appreciate it. Until next time, guys. Thanks.